Hello guys, today we will be discussing uh, carcinoma lip. Uh, so carcinoma lip is a part of uh, oral cavity uh, cancers. Uh, uh, so the important uh, important thing in carcinoma lip is uh, how we go about for the uh, reconstruction aspect. So uh, how to, what is the algorithm for reconstruction of the lower lip, upper lip and also the epidemiology of the lip cancers. So starting with anatomy, uh, the uh, the lip is supplied by facial artery. Uh, that uh, the branches of the facial artery that is the superior label and the inferior label. So facial artery comes out from the external carotid, goes above the mandible, and while going towards the orbit, it divides into superior and inferior label branches. And also the uh, nerve supply. The nerve supply is by infraorbital and mental nerves, which are the branches of kill nerve five. So here we can see the course of the facial artery going and supplying the lip. That is the inferior label artery and the superior label artery. And the uh, nerve supply is by the infraorbital and the mental nerves. Now, uh, as already told in my class in AGCC eighth edition uh, staging class, that the uh, that the lip is divided by the red line into a wet vermilion, which is the mucosal part inside, and the dry vermilion. And this dry vermilion is now no more the part of oral cavity cancer staging. It is a part of cutaneous carcinoma, and only wet vermilion is a part of oral cavity and comes as a part of. Uh, oral cavity staging for lip cancers, whereas dry vermilion staging, we should uh, follow the cutaneous malignancy staging. Uh, now, coming to the boundaries of the upper lip, so upper lip boundaries are not limited to the uh, this uh, vermilion area, it is bounded superiorly by the nasal sill and the columella, literally by the nasal labial fold, and inferiorly by the vermilion lip, whereas uh, the lower lip is bordered superiorly by the lower vermilion lip. Literally by the extensions of the nasolabial fold and inferiorly by the mental crease. Now, uh, coming to this, uh, what, what is Cupid's bow? Cupid's bow is a uh, is a part of aesthetic reconstruction of the upper lip. It provides aesthetics to the upper lip, and it is a kind of a downward projection from the, of the philtrum unit, which gives the lips its characteristic appearance. And now, coming to a very important part, what is the uh, lymph lymphatic drainage of the lip? So, uh, so the lymphatic drainage of the upper lip, the first echelon lymph nodes for the upper lips are the, uh, are the 1B nodes, that is the submandibular gland nodes and upper lip lymphatics can also go through the, uh, upper lip lymphatics can also go to the parotid area and finally the upper lip lymph nodes from 1B can go to 1A. Whereas the lower lip lymphatics are divided into two parts, that is the central part and the later part. So, central lower lip uh, uh, lymphatics go to the 1A region, whereas the lateral uh, uh, lower lip uh, primary echelon lymphatic drainage is to the 1B area. So, this is the lymphatic, lymphatic drainage of the lip which should be remembered. The upper, the primary echelon for the upper lip is the 1B, but whereas the upper lip can also go to the parotid lymph nodes, whereas the primary echelon for the lower lip central part is 1A, whereas the lateral part is 1B. Now, uh, coming to the epidemiology of the carcinoma of lip, epidemiology is important. So, carcinoma lip mostly occurs in areas where there is high sunlight exposure, uh, where, there is, uh, where there is high exposure to sunlight. So, the highest incidence occurs in South Australia. And since lower lip was more exposed to sunlight than the upper lip, so a lower lip is the more frequent site of uh, lip cancers than the upper lip and the commissioner. So, frequency uh, of uh, Cancers in the lower lip is around 88 to 90 percent, whereas upper lip is only around 2 to 7 percent. And where very rarely the lip cancer goes to the commissure area. So, and age group for lip cancers is 50 to 69 years of age. So the etiology is cumulative and prolonged exposure to UV radiations, which comes from sunlight. And patients which are having light skin complexion have less melanin or less melanin in the skin, so there is less protection from UV radiations. So they are more prone to this lip cancers. Uh, coming to histopathology, the most common variant is squamous cell carcinoma followed by melanoma followed by basal cell carcinoma. Uh, coming to lymph node meds, uh, so the overall incidence of lymph node meds is 5 to 30 percent. Uh, and uh, patients which are uh, involving the commissure, in which the lip cancer is involving the commissure, the incidence of neck meds is high, it is around 15 to 50 percent. And also, if the tumor is more than 2 centimeters uh, in size, the incidence of neck meds is 16 to 35 percent, whereas tumors which are sorry. So tumors which are uh, 
uh, more than 2 cm in size, the incidence of neck mites is around 16 to 35 percent, whereas the tumors which are less than 2 cm in size, that is T1 tumors, the incidence of neck, neck mites is only 4 to 7 percent. So, there is no role of elective neck dissection in T1. Elective neck dissection can be started from T2 lip cancers. Uh, and lip cancers involving the commissure, there is high incidence of neck mites around 5, 15 to 50 percent. Uh, now, coming to uh, the prognosis, the uh, carcinoma of upper lip and if there is a carcinoma of the upper lip and carcinoma in the commission, it has worse prognosis and the prognosis, the survival is around 10 to 20 percent lesser than the overall survival rate of the lip cancers. So, car cancers of the upper lip and the commission have wor worse prognosis than the lower lip cancers. Uh, now, coming to the uh, general survival rate in lip cancers. Uh, the 5 year survival for T1 and T2 cancers is around 90 percent, 90 to 80 percent with either surgery or radiation. So, uh, T1 or T2 cancers that is small cancers of the lip can be treated either with surgery or by uh, or by brachytherapy and they have equal survival whereas T3 and T4 lesions which are uh, lesions which are uh, more than 4 cm size or involving the bone have survival around 60 to 40 percent and they should be treated only with by surgery followed by adjuvant post op radiotherapy. The survival uh, with of surgery plus port is much better than uh, primary intent uh, of uh, than primary intent of non-surgical management that is radiation management in T3 T4. So T3 T4 are surgical disease whereas T1 T2 can be managed with RT or surgery. And uh, there is a general note in head neck. Uh, the, a general note in head neck is that if if there is if n positivity occurs that is if cervical disease is present that is if in po n positivity occurs the survival drops by 50 percent and in if that node there is extra nodal extension present then the survival drops further by 50 percent so this is a general rule which you should remember in head neck and it applies in all subsites uh, now coming to other modalities of treatment the other other modalities of treatment are Uh, most micrographic surgery, most about most micrographic surgery, I already discussed in uh, the pathology section. In most micrographic surgery, is mainly for uh, areas which are critical areas of the head neck, uh, where, like BCC of the cheek or uh, lip cancers, where we need to, where we need to exactly define our margins and not take extra margins. So what we can do, we can do surgery under um, under microscope and uh, take out thin margins and send for frozen section. And whichever margin is positive can be re-excised, so extra margins can be avoided via most micrographic surgery. The other option is brachytherapy, cryotherapy or photodynamic therapy. Uh, among this, the popular modes of treatment, uh, popular non-surgical modes of treatment for lip cancers are brachytherapy and uh, upcoming is a photodynamic therapy. So, these two uh, you should remember among non-surgical options. Uh, now, coming to goals of reconstruction. So, if one question has to come in lip cancers, it has to be. Uh, it has to be uh, how to reconstruct uh, the. Uh, what is the how, how to reconstruct a lip uh, defect in the lip cancers because it is an aesthetic area. So the major goals of reconstruction are maintenance of oral competence, uh, maximize the oral aperture, avoid a microstomia, maintain the mobility of the lip. It is a highly mobile structure and maintain the cosmesis. So, uh, so there. Uh, so we'll be. Talking about three kinds of defects, one is the mucosal defects limited to the vermilion, which are called as vermilion defects. Then second will be the full thickness uh, uh, lower lip defects and third will be full thickness upper lip defects. Uh, and I will be te telling you the algorithm for each and you should remember the algorithm to answer correctly which form of reconstruction or which form of flap can be used in which kind of cancer. So if the, if the vermilion defects are there and if there is a small defect, we can do a primary closure. If there is less than one third of the vermilion defect, uh, then we can do a sliding mucosal or sliding myomucosal uh, flap can be done uh, to cover that one, less than one third of the defect. If the defect is one third to two third, we can do a vermilion stitch that is part of vermilion mucosa or the myomucosa can be taken out from the upper lip and can be put here and can be released three weeks later once there is take up here. Or a tongue flap can be done that is a the part of tongue can be sutured to the defect and later on it can be excised once it takes up or a buccal mucosa advancement flap can be done. And for total vermilion defects, the options are tongue or buccal mucosa advanced lip flap. Now, uh, now coming to uh, lower lip uh, reconstruction. Uh, so before uh, before understanding 
the lower lip reconstruction and upper lip reconstruction you should know that the uh, lower lip is more related with competence or function of the uh, lip area uh, whereas the upper lip is more related with the aesthetics so uh, the advantage of lower lip is that there is increased soft tissue elasticity and there are no dominant central structures like a philtrum or the nose which are related with aesthetics whereas the disadvantage is that there is effect of gravity on repair and there is a chance of drooling and oral competence so uh, this is the algorithm for lower lip reconstruction it is very important uh, remember this is the most important slide of the video so if the if the lip defect the lower lip defect is less than one third then we, uh, a primary closure can be done if there is half to two third of the lip defect and there is sufficient lip tissue available and if the commissure is involved then we can go for a a slender flap and if commissure is not involved we can go for a heavy flap so here you can see uh, if there is uh, one, uh, one third to two third of the defect and the commissure is not involved then a heavy flap can be taken from the upper lip and can be switched here whereas if the commissure is involved uh, a slender flap can be taken from the upper lip and can be switched here so these are heavy and slender flap for one third to two third of the lip defects when sufficient lip tissue is available and if sufficient lip tissue is not available then we can go for a bernard's burrow webster modification in which what we do burrow triangles are made uh, one in the superior area and one in the inferior area so once these burrow triangles are made this lip area becomes free this area becomes free and this can be advanced and sutured here so uh, in bernard's uh, bernard's burrow webster modification there are four burrow triangles are made so that this area can be mobilized to be sutured so it is mainly required for one third to two third of the lip defects lower lip defects when sufficient lip tissue is not available and uh, when the defects are more than two third of the lip and sufficient adjacent cheek tissue is available we can do a carapensive flap so what is a carapensive flap in carapensive flap uh, release incisions are made in the cheek area so that this after this release incision this uh, this area can be mobilized and sutured together so the uh, so in the carapensive flap we skin and the mucosa are ex excised and the muscles are not excised the muscles are preserved so this is a very important point about carapensive that since muscles are preserved one second so this is a very important point about carapensive since muscles are preserved the competence since muscles are preserved the competence is also preserved and uh, we have to also preserve the labial arteries to which supply the muscles and also the nerve supply to the muscles so carapensic flap the advantage is that only skin and mucosa is taken and muscles with their blood and nerve supply is preserved so the competence can be preserved but the problem with uh, carapensic flap is microscopy so, so this was the lower lip uh, reconstruction algorithm which i told you for up to one third of the lip defects we can do a primary closure For one third to two third of the uh, two third of the lip defect, and if sufficient lip tissue is available, a nestlender or a heavy flap can be done. If insufficient lip tissue is there, then we can do a Bernard Burrow uh, Bernard Burrow uh, flap. If uh, sufficient adjacent cheek tissue is available, we can and uh, the defect is more than two third of the lip, we can do a carapensive flap. If it's sufficient cheek tissue is available, then we can go for a distant free flap. Now coming to uh, upper lip reconstruction, as I already told, upper lip. the special consideration is the is the cupid's bow filtrum it is more aesthetically important and it is less important for oral competence so so upper lip is more related with aesthetics so coming to reconstruction algorithm for upper lip up to uh, one third of the defects so, uh, so upper lip uh, defects are uh, classified into central defects and lateral defects so if there is a up to one third of the defect and it is a central defect we can go for a periela crescentric excision so what is a periela crescentric excision uh, in periela crescentric excision the release incisions are given around the nasal vestibule as so that this area becomes free and can be mobilized to close the to close the defect so this is a periela crescentric excision it is mainly used for central upper lip defects and uh, so up to one third of the central upper lip defects we can use a periela crescentric excision and if the vermilion is intact we can use a nasolabial flap and if the lateral defect is there we can do a primary closure 
Now, if the if the upper lip defects are one third to two third and it's a central defect, we can do a periolar concentric excision with a abbey flap. Like this, if the if there is a one third to two third of the defect and it's a uh, it's upper lip central one third to two third of the defect, then a periolar concentric excision with a abbey flap can be done. And if it's a lateral defect and the uh, oral commission is involved, then we can do a slender flap. But if it is not involved, we can do a abbey flap. So you can see. The slender and AP flap for upper lip defects. If the commission is involved, we can do a slender from the lower lip. If it is not involved, we can do a AP flap. Now, coming to more than two thirds of the defects, in the, if sufficient cheek tissue is available, we can do a Bernard Barrow Webster flap. And if it is insufficient cheek tissue, we can do a distant free flap. So, this is a Bernard Barrow Webster flap for upper lip. Here, again, four Barrow triangles are made. And after four Barrow triangles, this, this area can be mobilized. And can be used to close the defect. There is also a carapentric flap for upper lip defects. Similarly, uh, similarly like lower lip, uh, we give release incisions here, which and like this, release incisions are giving like this, and then this this area becomes free and can be mobilized. Same problem with of carapentric flap is that there is chances of microstomia, but the advantage is since the muscle uh, is preserved and the blood supply and the nerve supply is preserved. It can be um, it can be used for oral competence, but that is more important in lower lip than upper lip. Now, uh, key important points uh, regarding lip uh, lip anatomy is that oral orbicular is a, oris is the main muscle which is responsible for lip closure and competence, and uh, the modulus modulus is the area of muscle integration at the commissure. So this area is called as modulus, and uh, the problem with carapentric flap is that. Uh, uh, that there is uh, <coughs> there is chances of a uh, microstomia, uh, but the advantage is that there is preservation of the orbicularis or its muscle. Now uh, this is a table which is very important and it tells us the five year uh, disease specific survival for all subsites of oral cavities from a cell carcinoma. This I will be discussing further, but here since we are discussing lip, we should note that for stage one the survival is ninety two percent with surgery and. Uh, 89% with the RT. As I already told that for lip cancers in T1, in stage 1 and stage 2, lip cancers in stage 1 and stage 2, the survival rates are, all, uh, are almost 90 to 80% with either modality. We can give either surgery or brachytherapy. We can give either surgery or brachy in T1, T2, lip, in stage 1 and stage 2 lip cancers. But for stage 3, and stage four, the uh, the survival drops to sixty to fifty percent, and the survival is better with surgery, and it is almost half with radiation. So better mortality for stage three and stage four is surgery, not not radiation. So remember this survival of stage one, stage two with surgery and RT, and remember the survival with of stage three and stage four with surgery, which is much much better than. Art. So thank you. So this was uh, the class on uh, lip reconstructions uh, on carcinoma of lips. So important is the lymphatic drainage of lip, the uh, epidemiology of lip cancers, the staging, and the reconstruction algorithms. Uh, what will we do for upper lips? What will we do for lower lip? Upper lip is more related with aesthetics. Lower lip is more related with competence. And all the all the kinds of flap. The when is when a flap is used, when a slender uh, is used, when a carapentric is used, when a Bernard Barrow Webster flap is used, and when periolar crescentric excision flaps are used. So these are uh, these are very important. And if one question has to come, it will come on reconstruction and these flaps. So thank you.